Brioche comes in many different sizes and shapes, but it is the dough itself that is what you must master so that you can create these different kinds of shapes. It really helps if you have a mixer. This kind of mixer with a dough hook will simplify the entire process. Start with six eggs broken into the bowl of the mixer. It's the eggs, the salt, and the flour that start kneading immediately. And then we'll proof our yeast and look at this giant cake of yeast that we bought at a bakery. A cake like that costs about $5.50 and will last a couple weeks in the refrigerator. So if you are gonna buy fresh yeast, uh, find a bakery that sells it and buy smaller quantities unless you're gonna do a lot of baking. So here the eggs are broken up and to the six eggs add one tablespoon of salt. We have that right here, one tablespoon. I'm using kosher salt. And using a kitchen scale like this, we're going to weigh our flour one pound, two ounces, and we're going to zero out the bowl, which is also called tearing the bowl, T-A-R-E. Uh, make sure that it is on ounces. And generally a pound of flour uh, is about three and a half cups. There one pound, two ounces. And this gets mixed right into the eggs and salt. And you can stir that up uh, with your whisk and put it on the mixer with a dough hook. And just get this right on. I've been using a stand mixer like this ever since I can remember my mom had one. I still have her original KitchenAid. It is spectacular. So you see, just on low, let that start incorporating the eggs and the flour and the salt. And now um, the butter mixture and the yeast mixture. We have this fantastic cake of yeast and I need a half an ounce of yeast. Exactly half an ounce. How great. Crumble this up a little bit and add to this some warm milk, five tablespoons of warm milk, somewhere around 100 degrees, no warmer than that. Let that proof. Oh, you see how beautiful that dough is. And I'm going to gently break up that yeast. These little whisks are very handy. Yeast is a living organism. It is what leavens bread, what makes bread rise. So now this gets added to your flour mixture. Okay, so now while this is mixing, you're going to mix a quarter of a cup of castor sugar or extra fine, super fine sugar with three sticks of room temperature butter. We're using Plugra butter, which has an 82% butter fat, as opposed to the more normal uh, 78 to 80% that you find. This is a very nice butter. And we're going to add another half of this, which is one more stick. So three sticks equals three quarters of a pound of butter. And mix the sugar into the butter. So there, this is ready to incorporate into this lovely egg and flour mix. So just drop that butter down into the bowl and it will incorporate. Don't do it all at once. It takes a little while for the fat to be absorbed into the flour and egg. And this is what is going to make that brioche, that buttery, light, airy bread that is the final result. But there's just something about taking that brioche out of the oven and saying, I made this. That is really, really rewarding. And this should mix for another six to eight minutes. So I'm going to butter a big bowl like this with some of that softened butter. And this is going to be the rising bowl. This dough has to double in size before it can then be formed into whatever shape brioche you choose. So here we are ready with our dough and get this into 
the buttered bowl for its first rising. Cover with a piece of plastic wrap. I oftentimes, I don't know if you see, but on the edge of a drawer, I often put my plastic wrap so that it's already done because my hands are covered with dough and then I'm gonna mess up the box from the plastic wrap. Make sure all air is eliminated with the plastic wrap, a nice tight seal around the top. Warm, dry place for about two hours. Now, this is two hours later. Look how beautifully risen the dough is. Just carefully take the plastic wrap off. It's so buttery, it doesn't even stick. And what we're going to do now is deflate and then uh, cover it again and put it in the refrigerator for eight hours or overnight. And so gently pick up the dough and plop it down two or three times. That will certainly <laughs> deflate it. It is spongy and soft and it smells really good. Now cover it again. What it's really doing, these rising, are creating that delicious texture uh, that will appear as you bake the bread. So into the refrigerator, eight hours, enough talking. So now shaping the loaves. We're going to make one brioche a tete and one brioche loaf. Delicious. These are the size of the pans. Uh, you must butter the pans. I'm using a brush for this. You could use a piece of paper. You want to have a good coat of softened butter on it. So then that's nicely buttered. And the same thing for the loaf. Now the next thing, get your glaze ready. And to one egg yolk, just a tablespoon or so of milk. And mix that up with a fork. This is the top. This is what gets that golden color when you're baking. So have that ready there. And now forming the loaves. This has been in the refrigerator, remember, for eight hours. And the dough is released. You want to cut it in half because you're using half for the brioche a tete and half for the loaf. Cut it in half. I think I'll do the loaf first. It's easier. Let this sit right here. So here is your piece of brioche. Cut this into eight pieces, all the same size. Okay, so now you roll these into balls. But nice smooth tops. Mm, there, it's looking good. So there, we have the eight balls. Here is our pan, and you arrange these four on each side. There. Very nice. And now, egg wash. Try not to get too much egg. You don't want big globs of egg dripping down, but get right on top of those domes, and if you don't have any milk, you certainly can use cream, and you certainly can use water. So now, very important to cover this. Now, one thing you could do is spray the surface that's going to be touching the risen with a little bit of vegetable spray. This will make sure that the risen dough will not stick and destroy the nice round tops of your brioche. Okay, now the brioche a tete is a slightly different story. Here you have your half a recipe of dough. You need three quarters of it, so that's a quarter. Quarter is for the beautiful little tete head of the brioche, and this is the body of the brioche. Okay. So form this into a ball, like this, and with your thumbs, make a hole in the middle. And this fits right down into your mold. Now roll this too into a round. Once you get it into a round, then elongate it. It will fit down into that indentation. 
So, pretty. There is your brioche a tete. Now the same thing, egg wash. And just put your egg wash into the refrigerator until this has risen and you're going to do it again. There. And this too gets covered. A little bit of spray. And there. Into a dry, warm place for approximately two hours. And now, the reveal. There is our brioche a tete and our loaf brioche. So egg wash again. Don't deflate. Don't press too hard. And then our loaf very gently there. Now, here is one decorative technique. This is dressmaker shears. And we are going to cut around the outside on an angle. Dip the tips of the scissor in ice water as you snip. Looks like I'm gonna get five snips out of this. There. And this goes right into the preheated oven. 350 degrees in a convection oven for 15 minutes, check, and then for another 20 minutes. So altogether about 35 minutes. Brioche a tete, loaf brioche. Let me show you how great it looks inside. Slice this about, oh, about a half an inch thick. Look at the texture, the color. It is a spectacular loaf, very evenly cooked, very beautiful. Now a little bit of butter. You really don't need butter because it has so much butter, but I like butter. And oh, we just made this very delicious black currant jam. And have that on your brioche, yum. Now that is homemade brioche from Martha Bakes. Enjoy. Now this is the fun of brioche. With the same dough, we're now going to make mini brioche a tete. And these are baba orum. Your friends will not believe that you created it. These little mini brioche a tete uh, molds, these are about five ounces. Now I'm buttering them with the brush method, and these are baba o rum molds. These are five ounces. They cost about $5.50 each, and you can use these year after year uh, for your baba. Okay, so this buttering is done, and now to form these different shapes. So here's our beautiful dough. I'm going to use this bowl scraper to get every last bit out. and a little bit of bench flour, just to have to prevent stickiness. Make a little pile on the side and just use what you have to use. I'm doing this by eye, but uh, you can at home use a scale to measure out so that you have exact amounts. So I'm cutting this in half. Half will make 10 baba and eight brioche a tete. The baba are easy. You just make little round balls and drop them into the molds. You don't want any air in them because you don't want holes in your baba. Before you cover these to rise, egg wash them. Same egg wash, milk and egg yolk. And make sure that you cover these baba molds with plastic wrap. Use the same technique, spray a little bit of vegetable spray on top, lay the plastic down, dry, warm place. And now to form the mini brioche, we just cut this into eight pieces and take off 
one quarter for the top knot. Form this into a ball. Put this into the pan and create that indentation in the center with your fingers. Roll this into a ball with a tail. Go and stick that right in there. Egg wash. Cover with plastic wrap and let rise again in a dry, warm place until doubled in size. So our baba are doubled in size. Look how pretty they look. Egg wash them quickly and lightly once again. Mm. Okay, so these are gonna go into a 350 degree convection oven for five minutes, check to see how they're doing, and then bake them for another 10 minutes or so. And now for the mini brioche, again, brush very carefully. Taking your time to do this brushing will get you that golden crust. Mm, so beautiful. And now we're going to do the same snipping that we did before with cold scissors, four or five snips around the little top knot. And pop those into the oven. Set your timer five minutes to start and then another five or 10 minutes in the oven. And when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to make the rum syrup for the baba o rum. Now these are the little baba o rum without the rum. So we're gonna make the rum syrup right now. It's a simple sugar syrup of two cups of sugar one cup of best dark rum, and Meyer's rum is very good, and two and a half cups of water. We have that already measured out. Now bring that to a boil and cook just until the sugar is dissolved. And the babas are very absorbent, but you can just do a little bit of pricking with a toothpick. I don't do the tops of the heads because I don't want to see any holes in those, but you really don't see the holes in the bottom. The syrup will steep in very nicely. There, the sugar is totally dissolved. We can take this right back to the counter and soak your baba. And what you do is just immerse the brioche in that rum syrup. Roll them around, turn them over. They should be completely soaked. Now, depending on how soaked you want them, you can uh, leave them in the syrup, but you don't want to leave them so long that they start to disintegrate. And I'm just putting them out on a rack so that they can drain a little bit. Mm, yum. So now when you want to serve a baba o rum, take your baba, it's very delicate, and use a serrated knife to slice through the baba. Place it whichever way you want on a plate. You can spoon a little bit more of that rum syrup on the interior if you like. And I like. I'm decorating with a few amazing cherries from California. And how about a dollop of whipped cream? Whipped cream and rum and brioche. A dessert fit for a king. But I hope you enjoyed learning all about brioche today on Martha Bakes. Enjoy.